Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Maria Peters. She is a veterinarian and assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. Great to see you, Maria. Great to see you too, Joe. Now, at the 2018 Lehman Conference, you gave a presentation on mycoplasma. I know that's one of your specialties, but it had a um, great title. It was, where are we at and where are we going? So I'm going to use that as my first question. Where are we at? Well, that's um, very interesting that you ask us. Um, at, at the end of the day, that's what I wanted to give as a message to everyone at, after the presentation. What is it that we've been doing in the last years and where that has informa that the information taken us and where we can go from there? So it is, um, a, it's been a great uh, way to spend the years doing research in mycoplasma and uh, figuring out things that people need, you know, like answers that they need in the field and what is it that they can do with that to take them to the next step. And, and I am referring to control about mycoplasma honey. Okay, and yeah, and I, I want to talk with you more about that because this is a disease that has been around for a long time. I think every pork producer in the country, if not the world, has experienced it at some point. What are we doing wrong? I mean, it just doesn't seem like this disease will go away. You know, I think we're not doing things wrong. It's just that we didn't pay a lot of attention to it. So we were not doing enough. And in reality, what has happened is that we have realized, well, we can control this disease. It is a costly disease. Well, it is time for us to do something. Mm -hmm. And what exactly do we have to do? Because, you know, you look at the pork magazines and even our, our own pig health today, and you see a lot of things about uh, PERS and circovirus and flu. Um, some things about mycoplasma, but it, it seems like it hasn't been getting uh, enough attention. And you're totally right. What happens with mycoplasma, it is that it is a silent uh, disease, right? It is there, it is present, like you said earlier, in uh, most of the swine herds in the country and in the world, but uh, we never really realized the, the, the value of um, the effect that it has in, in the herds. And what happens is that now people are using metrics and they are measuring what is it that mycoplasma costs in their systems. And, and um, that has been the driver for everybody to think about control as, as something that is really needed in the field. And what do we know about the cost? I mean, in a grower finisher operation, what kind of losses could we expect if we don't pay attention to mycoplasma? Well, um, it varies a lot depending on how you measure it, right? But um, regardless of being a close-out data or uh, comparing positive and negative hertz or before and after, right? You can do it in several ways. But people would agree that maybe $5 per head of animal that, you know, every animal that is going to market, that's the cost of mycoplasma. And you don't realize it until you really measure it. And the way margins are now, I mean, nobody can afford to lose $5 a pig. And that's a great opportunity. Something is a low-hanging fruit. Let's put it that way. Okay. What do we know about mycoplasma um, in terms of co-infections? Because, you know, pigs are just a, a mixing vat for diseases, it seems. And you never have just mycoplasma alone. You never have PERS alone. What have we learned about mycoplasma and its relationship with other diseases? Something really important is that mycoplasma is a door opener. Okay, so you can have other diseases, but if mycoplasma is not present, it, cannot be, it, it won't be such an issue. But if mycoplasma is there, then you can think that um, other bacterial agents, other viral agents will have a better opportunity to get, um, you know, comfortable in the respiratory system and cause more disease when mycoplasma is it's just there as a primary agent. So what's the strategy with mycoplasma? Is it prevention, control, treatment? Control. Um, I would say most of our farms are positive already, so if we think about prevention, it will be maybe too late for that, but control is the key. I would say that the ultimate way of control is elimination, and that's what the producers and veterinarians are using right now, and they have realized that this is a way to go. But I understand only about 10% of the herds have achieved mycoplasma elimination. Because not everybody has tried it. There are many studies showing that this is doable. Of course, the success rate is not 100%, but it's really high. And you can easily justify your system embarking in an, in an elimination program because it, it pays off. But mycoplasma elimination isn't really for everyone, correct? I mean, doesn't, have a, doesn't it have a lot to do with the location of the farm and the flow of the pigs? 
I wouldn't think location is the most important factor in that sense, and I would disagree in the fact that we can apply it in different farms, it's just that we cannot do it the same way. So we'll have to tweak things a little and adjust it specifically to each farm. Each farm is unique, each herd is unique, and it is doable. Now one thing about mycoplasma, I mentioned PERS and circovirus and some of the other diseases that get all the big headlines, um, but those are all viruses. Mycoplasma is a bacterium. So we, we've got some additional tools for controlling that, correct? Yeah, but when we use antibiotics, for example, that you can use to control bacterial infections, they are not 100% effective in eliminating the bacterium. And this is a very tricky bug, and it can stay in the respiratory tract of the pig for a very long time, in more than seven months. It is a very long time. So in that case, even antibiotics are not going to be able to reach there where we need to treat the animals and get rid of, of of the bacterium or the infection. So we cannot really think that we're gonna clear it and clean the, the pigs by using antibiotics. We have to use a combination of different methods, antibiotics, vaccines, and management to be able to tackle this pathogen. What's the one thing that pork producers could be doing better in terms of trying to control mycoplasma? I think these times are really good in the sense that people are reading what, what has been done on mycoplasma, understanding that the epidemiology of the disease or our understanding of the epidemiology of the disease has changed. And this gives us the opportunity to do um, design of um, protocols that are more strategic for elimination. And I think people are doing what they have to do. We just need to get them um, excited about it. The second half of the title of your presentation was, where are we going? Uh, with mycoplasma. Where are we going? I mean, where do you see us in three years? Are we going to see more farms eliminating the bacterium altogether? Definitely. I don't think that three years will be, you know, the timeline and we'll be able to reach a very high percentage of eliminations in, in, in that period, but um, we are moving towards elimination. This is something that cannot be stopped. People are seeing the benefits of um, having the farms negative to mycoplasma anemone, and it just talks on its own, and people will start doing more and more of those elimination programs. But of course, even if you've eliminated it, there's always that risk of it coming back, correct? Yeah, and uh, failure of elimination programs has been shown as well, right? It happens, it's not 100%, but it is a high proportion of um, elimination programs that are successful. So um, I think it is um, encouraging as well that we see that lateral infections do not seem to be um, so um, important in mycoplasma as they are for other pathogens, like let's say PERS virus. Um, so if it doesn't happen so often, people will be more um, willing to do elimination programs in placing those pigs even if they are going to hog dense areas. And one final question, what have we learned about diagnostics for mycoplasma? Um, I know people would say that we haven't improved as much as we should have for uh, diagnostics of mycoplasma, but over the last 10 years we've done tremendous um, Im improvement. We have new methods that are um, more sensitive for detection and we have understood finally that we have to do a little bit more effort and be um, unfortunately a little bit more invasive but trying to get the bug where it lives, right? So deeper in the respiratory tract you have to sample and that's where you get the best sensitivity and we are being able to detect um, the pathogen in, in farms where we thought it was not present. So we've been really getting into the area where it is. And specifically, what kind of testing are we talking about? We're using uh, real-time PCR mainly, but the sample type is the, the one that is really important. So the deeper, the deeper you go in the respiratory tract, we're doing uh, deep tracheal catheters uh, for sampling. And that combined with the real-time PCR has um, achieved a very high sensitivity. Well, thank you so much for updating us on your work with mycoplasma, and uh, certainly it'll be um, interesting to see how the industry progresses over the next couple of years with its um, efforts to eliminate the bug. It's been my pleasure to share this information. Thank you. We've been talking to Dr. Maria Peters. She is a veterinarian and assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. Thanks again.